I'm Davi Go, and today we're talking about nightmare clients. This drawing I'm doing has nothing to do with this story, but until I can convince you guys that I'm more than just a pencil, I suppose I have to throw something up on the screen. I recently saw a tweet from this artist whose username I am not prepared to pronounce where they shared an interesting experience they had with a client of theirs. In this tweet, there is a screenshot of messages this client had sent to them, apparently in response to an illustration they had done. Now, the content of these messages, the wording, has caused quite the stir. This screenshot in the semi-viral tweet is captioned with the following sentiment from the artist, quote, I was really on the fence about posting this, but please, I beg you, it doesn't have to be an artist. Do not treat any other human being like this, please. How was this artist treated, you ask? Well, let's take a look at that screenshot, shall we? It reads, quote, No offense, I appreciate you made the changes I asked for, but it's not how I envisioned my OC, or original character. It looks so bad. She looks really immature in your style, but I already paid for it, so I guess I'll just take it as it is. Thank you. I'm not satisfied with my order, so I'm probably not going to commission you next time or recommend you to anyone. Please try harder next time. Thank you. If you're a working creative, this artist's experience might resonate with you. Similarly, you might identify with the client in question if you're like an art collector or if you've just worked with creatives before. I think this is a complex situation with many factors to consider. In this video, I want to break down this topic and discuss all the issues I've identified with both sides. To be clear, I'm not an expert on business or being a professional, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. I don't personally know any of the parties involved and I don't mean any harm by anything I say in this video. I'm just an illustrator who's very familiar with situations like this and wanted to share my insight on handling them. The first thought that came to me when reading that client's messages was, wow, that's so fucking unkind. I felt some kind of injustice on behalf of this artist because the whole situation really makes no sense. How can you be this upset, this surprised at the end result, if you knew what the artist's style was like before commissioning them? You said it yourself. She looks really immature in your style. This tells me you are fully aware of what kind of art you could expect from day one. So why waste the artist's time, and yours, as well as your money? if you already had an understanding of their style and knew you were looking for something different. Well, this is something I've noticed is very common with what I like to call the casual art admirer. You know the one, that, oh, you can draw, can you draw me, type of bitch. It's the type of person who only appreciates art on a surface level. To this person, the creative process is a mystery, and not one worth exploring. Art is only interesting or useful for as much as they can see themselves directly represented in a literal sense. And the artist? Oh, they're just a tool. You can draw. 
Therefore, you must be able to execute my idea exactly as I see it in my head, regardless of your skill level, or style, or creative boundaries. To them, art is just like another can of tuna they can take off the shelf. Now, this kind of person isn't always bad. They're really only problematic when, in addition to being ignorant about the creative process, they are not open to being educated. My initial theory on what happened here is that this person is just this kind of casual art admirer. They have a very specific, yet obscure, vision of what they want. They aren't creative themselves, so they can't do it themselves. Neither can they articulate what it is they want, nor figure out how best to get it executed. If that's the case, all this could have been avoided by simply doing research. As any kind of consumer, you have to be smart with your money. If you're interested in buying a product or service you're not familiar with, you should always do your research before making any decisions. You have to do your homework to make sure you're fully educated and armed to get the best deal for you. And to protect yourself from potential scams. If we are to assume this artist was honest and professional this entire time, then I don't think this client's response was fair or necessary. They can go suck a dick, if you will. But what if this artist wasn't so honest? What if they were in a tight spot or needed the money and made promises they knew they couldn't fulfill? Then, quite frankly, go off, sis. You've spent your money and you have every right to be upset and to vocalize that. Listen, don't be that artist. Do not perpetuate the stereotype of the lazy, unreliable creative who neglects their responsibilities. If you are pursuing a career in art, you are a one-man business, and you have a responsibility to your clients and supporters. How do you feel when you order that nice-looking, 100% organic cotton top online, but when the package arrives, it's some kind of itchy? borderline plastic, polyester disaster that's two sizes too small. Fuck that, right? Yeah. Well, fuck you too. Fuck you if you actively advertise services you cannot commit to. Never mind your career. You help to tarnish the public perception of every other creative in your field. I know this may be hard to believe, but I am not perfect. I have not always done the right thing in my career, but that is exactly why I wanted to talk about this. I've learned a lot from my time as a working artist, and even more from my years doing 9 to 5s. Highly recommend that character building suffering, by the way. I think this all boils down to one thing, basically. Taking ownership. If the client was wrong, they should learn to take ownership of the fact that they didn't make an informed decision and see to it that they are a sharper shopper going forward. If the artist was wrong, they need to take ownership of the fact that they need to objectively assess their skills, abilities, needs, and boundaries. If you don't have a clear idea of what you offer, whether that's one thing or a dozen, you might not be ready for an art career. That may sound harsh, but you'll really want to invest some time in developing your skills and understanding yourself in comparison to your peers, as well as in comparison to your career idols. This whole situation is bad enough but there's something else that concerns me in all of this. In a subsequent tweet, 
the artist mentioned considering publicly naming this client. The idea being that other artists could be put on their guard and know to avoid working with what is generally perceived to be this unfair and unkind person. Don't do it, sis. Don't do it. Like I mentioned, as a working artist, you are a one-man business. It generally does not present well for you to be airing out you and your client's dirty laundry. Specifically in this situation, your client said they would still pay you despite their dissatisfaction, and you confirmed that they did so. So I don't think you have a case for naming and shaming here. As rude as this person was, they still paid you, and they decided to move on, so the worst is really over. They aren't continually harassing you or slandering your name as far as you've said, and if I understand what they wrote correctly, they just said they wouldn't recommend you to anyone else. I completely understand exactly how cutting and defeating it can feel to receive such hard feedback about your work. Everything we make as creatives is so often an extension of ourselves, and so it can be particularly difficult to process criticism about our work, whether valid or not. I want to encourage you to just take any lessons you can from this experience and adjust the way you handle clients accordingly. This was rough, but you're still here and you still got paid. So chin up. There are better things ahead if you stay dedicated. And that goes for all of you who've made it here to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.